Hey everybody, Ed Holmwood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. I hope everyone's doing well today. Today we're going to talk about the Cambridge Audio CXA81 Mark II. This is a, another chapter in the continuing saga of Old Guy Hi-Fi reviewing integrated amplifiers. So sit back, relax, and we'll have some fun with this. Bridging past and present in the glow of autumn light He holds the future gently like he held the past so tight In the old guy's hi-fi Everything feels right So the CXA81 sits at the top of Cambridge's kind of regular line of products that includes the A-series and the C-series. And it's a beefy guy at 80 watts by 2 into 8 ohms, 120 watts by 2 into 4 ohms. And I think when you look in, when we look inside, you'll see the power supply and agree with me that it's probably underrated. It has a frequency response of 5 hertz to 60,000 hertz. Um, it can run 4 ohm speakers, no problem, but it has two pairs of speaker outputs. So if you're going to run two pairs of speakers, they both need to be 8 ohms. It does have a built-in DAC that's based on the ESS Sabre 9018 K2M DAC chip. And in this implementation, it actually, actually performs quite well. I found it to be nice to listen to without any question. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the front panel. I'm going to spin it around and we're going to look at the back. I'm going to open it up and we're going to look inside and then I'm going to come back and tell you how I think it sounds. So here we are on the front panel of the CXA81. We've got a power button, a 3.5 millimeter headphone input, and then our input controls. So you have four single-ended, but you also have a balance, as you'll see when we turn it around on the back, and I'll show you that in just a second. So just touch an input or from your remote control, hit one of the inputs. And so for A1, that's single-ended and balanced. If I hit it a second time, it turns red, indicating that that's the balanced input, which I think is really cool. Speaker A, speaker B, both, none. Uh, all your digital inputs, including USB and Bluetooth. Now, one of the things that I do, because I watch all of my TV, basically, which is none, mostly YouTube videos, via a PC, so I USB out into this, and then the remote control has a separate USB button. I don't have to mess around with any of the other inputs, just hit that, and there's my TV sound. It's really, really interesting. I can also do it, too, if I take the optical from the TV out and put it into one of the optical inputs, D1 or D2. And then, of course, we have our volume control. So that's a look at the Cambridge Audio CXA81 front panel. Let's spin it around and look at the back. So here we are looking at the back panel of the CX81. We have our IEC power socket. We have a D sub 9 pin for RS-232 for system control. We also have control bus, obviously for a variety of uh, home system integration like Crestron, Extron, AMX. There is an IR input, so you can get a little IR receiver and just plug it in if this is going to live in a cabinet behind a door. 12 volt triggers, good beefy uh, speaker binding posts. And as we move over here, Bluetooth antenna. And then we have sub out. Now, there is no base management on this unit. It is strictly a full range output, but I use the, the crossover in my subwoofer and you can as well. It does have a pre out if you want to run out to stereo subwoofers or use that as a subwoofer option, or if you want to run out to an external amplifier. It has one, two, three, four inputs. Now, this one says unbalanced and this one says balanced. This is A1 balanced, A1 single ended. And that's when you go from red to blue on the input on the front panel. USB-B with a ground lift if you've got a noise issue. Spit of coax and spit of toss link. So really a full featured, very well laid out back panel on the CXA81. Now, let's go crack it open and take a look inside. Well, here we are looking at the inside of the CXA81 Mark II from Cambridge Audio. And you can see big Terrell transformer. Um, it is a dual winding. So basically it... It is the same as dual mono, very close. Um, obviously, each side of the amplifier is completely separated by the width of the chassis, so there's very little interference from one another. Good power transistors, and I'll show close-ups of all of that stuff. About 28,000 microfarads worth of capacitance. And again, all through-hole technology, which I like. Some people have told me that through-hole doesn't make a difference. Uh, surface mount is just fine. I've always found that the really good sounding equipment, if you open it up, it's all through whole technology. So this is the DAC board. This is where the ESS Sabre 901, excuse me, 9018K2M lives and a nice big XMOX processor, good spit of receiver, good oscillator clock, very, very well constructed unit. 
preamp input board down here, but the preamp board lies up here at the front of the unit. Uh, very well laid out again through whole technology, like it a great deal. So anyway, that's the inside of the Cambridge Audio CXA81, as you can see, really well built and a very robust and stout amplifier. Well, as you can see from looking inside this guy, it is beastly. It's a very well-constructed amplifier, and it shows in the way it sounds. It is got, excuse the expression, this amplifier has balls. Um, it really is dynamic and very, very good. Um, and I'm going to talk about the, the, some of the music I used when I was reviewing it, and we're going to talk about the overall sound quality, and I'll talk about imaging and then in the summary. So the first recording I used was this one from Special Effects called Double Feature. Now this is a really well-recorded kind of smooth jazz album from the 80s, and it's from a label called GRP Records. And you guys may remember Grusen and Rosen Productions. That's Dave Grusen, the very famous jazz pianist and composer and soundtrack composer and producer. It is really well-recorded, good bass, good everything, full range, very, very nicely done, uh, excellent sound, good dynamics, all of that other stuff, and this kept pace with it really, really good. Um, the bass was excellent on it, and I'll get into more detail after I summarize all the albums, but it performed very, very well, and it made that, that recording sound great. Um, the next one I used to try to get some vocals, and it's a really interesting combination, was the T Tedeschi Trucks band and this album called Signs. Now, Derek Trucks and Susan Tedeschi are great guitarists, but they also are excellent singers, and Susan's voice is great. She reminds me a lot of Bonnie Raitt. He's got this husky, deep baritone voice, and the juxtaposition of those two voices was excellent to try to, you know, figure out mid-range and listen to detail and kind of hear how it does. And this did a really, really good job with all of that. It's also dynamic, and there's some good, there's some ballads in there, and there's some good rocking pieces. Uh, Derek Trucks was part of the Almond Brothers band for a long time, uh, and that's the kind of sound. It's kind of that Southern boogie, that Georgia good, you know, good old roots rock and roll kind of stuff, and it sounds great. Uh, and it really well recorded. Again, the two voices you know, kind of playing off one another was really, really interesting. To try to get a better sound, a better idea of imaging and overall, you know, high frequency sound and all that other stuff, I played this recording from Fritz Reiner and the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. It is Tchaikovsky's Sixth Symphony, and it is an amazing recording. Now, in the, back in the late 50s, stereo was just coming into effect. And RCA created this series of, of uh, records, recordings of all different kinds called Living Stereo. And they are super well regarded. And some of them are real big collector pieces. What RCA had done is they developed a, mag a planar magnetic microphone, a very large diaphragm microphone that was very full range. And they used that in a lot of these Living Stereo recordings. And I believe this was one of them. Um, and that big giant microphone could pick up the full range of the orchestra. And it also was sensitive enough to pick up the very quiet stuff, but also built well enough they could handle the dynamics. And so this recording has, well, while it is somewhat limited by late 50s technology, it is an excellent recording. So the Sixth Symphony from Tchaikovsky starts out real slow. There's quiet passages. And one of the things I found interesting about this amplifier, and I've heard it on other ones, but on this amplifier at its price point, I was really kind of, I don't know, very pleasantly surprised that I could pull these kinds of details out. In the quiet passages, you could hear that there actually are people in the orchestra. And I don't know how to describe that other than occasionally you might hear someone shift in their chair because they're all in folding chairs and they creak and make noise. People breathing, maybe somebody lightly coughing way off in the background trying to you know cover their mouth and mute that. But you get a sense that there are actually people there. You know, uh, you know someone flipping the page, a little libretto to the next series of, uh, of uh, notes and so forth. So that sense of detail was really present in this. Now, obviously, you know, a lot depends on what I was feeding it. I was feeding it from the Live Harmony deck. I fed it from my Bifrost and I fed it from the Gishelli Daisy and J2S. So that was getting a great signal and it was passing that signal on to the speakers. This with this recording, I got a great sense of air, a great sense of room space, a great sense of just kind of presence of people being the actual orchestra being people and i really really enjoyed that and again the crescendos were wonderful transients were well reproduced decays were beautiful and let's talk about sound quality but first let me talk about the fact that i need you to give me a like and a subscribe i've got to work on my segues i ran this through all the speakers i have the elac dbr 62s and it sounded very good with those 
I ran it through the big Wharfdales. They sounded really good. And I ran it through these bad boys and you can't see them. It is the Triangle Magellan Series Duetto 40th uh, large stand mount speakers at about $7,000 for the pair. And this had the chops to drive those things wonderfully. And so let's talk about all that. In my estimation, and I'm a source first guy, the first link in the chain, the DAC or whatever, turntable, whatever, that has to provide the best possible signal so that this can reproduce that, amplify that signal and provide the best possible signal out to the speaker system. And this did a great job. So as far as bass response goes, this is a quick amp. It has plenty of balls to get down deep and really dig out the lowest notes and really do it with a lot of detail and nuance. So overall, the amplifier is incredibly detailed. It is neutral, but smooth. And I don't know how to describe that. There's no fatigue in this at all. It is really easy to listen to. And it's easy to listen to loud. That's the other nice thing is when I turned up the volume, I didn't get a sense of any compression from the amplifier running out of steam. It had plenty of dynamics. So bass was well reproduced. Mid bass was really well reproduced. Drums sounded normal. On bass drums, I know it's on a snare, when, it, when it, someone hits the, the skin of the snare with a drumstick, you can hear that initial thwack or attack from the stick hitting the skin and then the body of the drum. I was getting that on the bass drum. And even though the ma mallet on the bass drum is padded, you know, fur lined or whatever it is, I could hear that initial strike on the skin and then you could hear the body of the drum. So it did a really, really good job on that. All the way through the mid-range with uh, uh, Derek Trucks and, and Susan Tedeschi's voice, uh, excellent reproduction of human vocals. All the detail was there, all the nuance you could hear kind of get the sense of breath and you could get the sense of, you know, it's actually someone really singing and it, the, the, the ability to his husky baritone and her, I don't know if you call it a soprano, but very much like Bonnie Raitt's voice. It was excellent. All the details there. It's a, their band is 12 pieces. So you could pick out the individual instruments if they were all playing in the song. And it was very easy to do that in the, in the, uh, symphony with the with Chicago Symphony, you could hear all of those instruments, even though there were mass strings, lots of brass, things like that, you could still pull it out. So the detail was very, very good. So this did its job right. It took the, the signal incoming, amplified it, and sent it out to the speakers as cleanly and as neutral as possible. So it is neutral, but it it is it is smooth, not necessarily warm, not not strident, not all right, let's talk about it. You guys are going to ask, how does the Audio Lab 6000A compare to this? It doesn't. This is a far better product as far as sonically and as you saw on the inside, it is way better built. So this is, it is better. It is not strident. It's not fatiguing at all. So it's smooth but detailed. All right, the other comparison is going to be the Advanced Paris XI-75 integrated amplifier. And that's tougher because the, the, the two of them are very, very similar in um, the way they perform. <clears throat> Although I would give the nod to the Advanced Paris XI-75 for goes into and goes out is for having tone controls, which this doesn't, having a loudness control, which this doesn't, having a phono preamp, which this doesn't. Now, Advanced Paris's house sound is very warm and very smooth. Not maybe as warm as my AXR-100, and certainly not as warm as the classic tube sound, but it's a warm sound. This isn't, this, I don't think it has very much warmth in it, maybe a little bit, but it is just very smooth and detailed. So it kind of edges out the advanced Paris, maybe on the upper frequencies as far as detail and a little extra resolution and air and room sense. Um, and it's going to edge it out uh, on bass. I mean, this is, I think this is a more dynamic amplifier than the XI-75. That said, I could live with either one for the rest of my life. They're both excellent. Um, they're both really, really good. So I don't, it's kind of a tie. Sonically, this is a little bit better. Functionally, I think the Advanced Paris is a little bit better with the goes in is and goes out is and all the other features. So let's talk about imaging. Um, imaging was locked solid against that ability to resolve those high frequency details, upper mid range, lower treble, where all the room sense and presence and everything else lives. This did a great job. It had the chops to drive the big expensive triangles, no problem. And I think I, I, I felt like I was getting everything out of the whole chain without any issue. Lock solid center image. Great, amazing image width with the triangles. Great image width with the, the uh, Wharfdales and the ELAC DBR62s. Um, but the triangles are on a different level without any question. The image was huge. It was wide. It was high. It was deep. It, it was lock solid center. 
very excellent instrument placement on the orchestra stuff. You know, anytime there's a studio recording, those the imaging in that is rec- is created by the engineer at the mixing board. But it was well laid out and well appointed, and where wherever they decided to put the instrument, you could point to exactly where it was. So they did a really good job. Very good depth. I mean, a remarkable depth on the on the sound stage. Not the deepest in the world, but for twelve hundred dollars, this thing really punches above its weight. I believe. Um, I think it does a great job. So anyway. High recommendation on the uh, Cambridge Audio CXA81. I really enjoyed my time with it. I thought it was it's very well put together. It equips itself quite well. It had the chops to drive a really expensive pair of speakers without any trouble. Just I, I gives, gets a recommendation. Now, if you are in the market for something like this or some product from Cambridge, I would ask a favor. I would love to have you guys support our friend Kevin Mall at Skylabs Audio in Des Moines, Iowa. He is an authorized Cambridge dealer. He's also an authorized advanced Paris dealer. And if you're considering purchase something, let's support a small business. There will be a link in the video description to his store if you'd like to go. And if this is something advanced Paris or this is something you want to consider purchasing, please consider purchasing it from him. He's a great guy and we want to support that business. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video and you'll support me by giving me a like and a subscribe. And if you want to further support the channel, there is a thank you button at the bottom of the window. If you want to join the channel, there'll be a membership link in the pinned comment and in the video description. And along with the link to Skylab's online store, there will also be Amazon affiliate links, my playlists. Please continue to send me playlists. Please check out the community post with all the playlists. There's some great music there. Comment. Let me know. Um, what kind of sound do you like? What kind of amplification do you like? Is this something you might be interested in? Is there some other alternative? Um, it shut itself off. It does have an auto shutoff feature if it doesn't detect a signal. Um, anyway, so let's put it back on. So please like, subscribe, uh, comment, let me know your thoughts about things. Um, if you wish, you can follow me on Instagram. I think I've said everything I need to say. That's it. I'm Ed Homewood. This is the Old Guy Hi-Fi channel saying now it's time for you to go listen to some music you love, maybe on a really nice integrated amplifier. Thank you so very much for your time. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful day.